MIT is known around the world as an incubator for technological breakthroughs and scientific discoveries. Many of these have become indispensable parts of our everyday lives, from the transistor radio to the World Wide Web, from Technicolor to e-ink, and from military radar to friendly robots. But one of MIT's major firsts in particular should warm the heart of anyone who's ever gripped a video game controller or dropped a quarter into an arcade cabinet. In the late 1970s, MIT became the birthplace of Zork, a groundbreaking text adventure game which helped our society to recognize the true creative and imaginative potential of the computer as a storytelling platform. Zork was one of the first text adventure games, developed by the Dynamic Modeling Group, a research lab right here at MIT. But the story of Zork begins in 1976, when the very first text adventure, Colossal Cave Adventure, emerged from a lab at Stanford University. Uh, they say that it uh, set everyone back a week who was working in computing as they all tried to uh, solve uh, adventure. And then it set some people back even further as they tried to create their own versions. So this is done by like Jonathan Layard um, in the AI community now um, at uh, Carnegie Mellon and uh, people at uh, University of Cambridge on the Phoenix mainframe system. And then, um, of course, at MIT it was done um, by, uh, by creating Zork and using um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, better sorts of language interface technology, uh, bringing in new elements to the game, like uh, making uh, the thief more of a real uh, sort of character rather than just an, an occasional obstacle that pops up to, to thwart you. Um, and, um, uh, you know, just a, a developing in sort of both narrative and gaming ways and, te and te underlying technology ways um, to, uh, to make, uh, you know, something that was, that was pretty cool, pretty compelling. And, uh, and was a, a step beyond what you had in adventure. Zork was a unique gaming experience, but it was also a uniquely MIT experience. Well, I'd say there's, there's two major ways to think about Zork being connected to MIT, and one is that MIT is the place at which it could happen, that someone made a game like this. I mean, as I mentioned, there's other places, CMU and U University of Cambridge, and so on, where people made interactive fiction, but um, really a handful. It wasn't like um, anyone at any university or any business that had a computer, you know, could just make one of these in their spare time. Certainly not uh, that you could go and uh, make one at home. Um, so providing uh, an environment in which the, that game could be created and um, having uh, the ability to sort of uh, uh, hack in the pranking sense as well as the uh, computer hacking sense, uh, you know, and tool around, try out different things, um, use a research server of the group that you work for, you know, to, uh, to host this game and so on. Like, having that ability was, was part of what made Zork happen, and so that's part of the connection to MIT. There were also some, some things that, that uh, referred to MIT, you know, uh, more directly and sort of drew on uh, MIT experience, which includes going around tunnels, going into a tunnel space and, you know, going around in this, uh, in this environment. Um, and uh, not experiencing the natural world as Will Crowther did when he went caving, but um, going to a highly um, architected space which includes subterranean and other sort of secret spaces. In 1979, the MIT students who made Zork realized they needed something to do after graduation. They knew that people all over the country played Zork on MIT's mainframe computer. In fact, the mainframe version of the game had already become so popular that it was tough for most users to even get a spot on the time-sharing service for the PDP-10 computer that ran it. So, they decided to form a company, Infocom, and as their first product, release a version of Zork that could run on the sort of personal computers that were then just starting to appear in homes and businesses. Uh, Infocom was a, was a major um, uh, company and, you know, it uh, it was not founded to be a game company, particularly, which is why it has this generic name, Infocom, uh, which, you know, it could be anything. Who knows what they're doing? Something with information and communications, maybe, or, uh, you know, or, or information company or something. You know, we don't know. Um, but uh, but they, they found out, they thought, oh, well, sort of low-hanging fruit would be c conversion of this game for the commercial market. And so they started on that. Uh, it was very successful. I found... Um, it was fun to write more of these. Uh, people like them, and uh, so they went. Uh, they went in that direction. Um, but uh, Infocom was, you know, 1984, uh, summer of 1984, I believe. You know, the, the top entertainment software company in the U.S. and the world. I mean, they had um, so many uh, uh, top. T they had numerous. I think something like six top ten 
games, you know, um, uh, among all genres of game, not just for, for text adventures. So, uh, and Funcom was a big force in this emerging market of personal computer software and entertainment software. And uh, um, they tried to do other things, but that was part of their, their profile as a company. Infocom wasn't a game company when it started. It was a company that was going to do something with computing. And that's the case, I think, with a lot of the... It, there are similar things to look at throughout MIT with the way that games came about. The Space War creators were not uh, video game makers or video game developers, because until they had created Space War, there was no such thing as a video game developer, essentially. Um, so all of these things uh, came about in, uh, in, in this context because it was the, you know, MIT was among the first places in the world where people could just play with a computer and try out different things. Infocom games were a uniquely immersive experience from packaging to playthrough. So these uh, uh, included sorts of materials, these feelies that came with Infocom package, you know, provided, um, I mean, first of all, something that really looked slick, got people uh, interested, excited, made it feel worthwhile to spend money on something that you might be able to obtain uh, illicitly otherwise, you know, but uh, they also um, uh, really, you know, gave an entree into the game and provided some more information. Um, so uh, that was part of, uh, that was part of what went on there. Um, but also just providing uh, sort of maps, uh, explanations of how to get around. I mean, because of the cost of uh, early software and uh, because of the way, you know, people who did obtain their software from a computer store, they did purchase it, uh, were very likely to read the manual to some extent uh, rather than just diving in. There was a lot of uh, possibility for um, uh, you to get information in uh, those, uh, uh, those uh, materials. Um, uh, and become oriented to the game and learn things about what a typical walkthrough was like and so on. Um, so that was part of what Infocom did. That, that was, of course, a difference from uh, the mainframe Zork as it was created at MIT. Zork not only fed into the social culture of computing that existed in the late 1970s, it also sparked its own unique culture here at MIT. When people did play early games, um, uh, they, it was uh, in, I think, a more uh, traditionally social context with other people around, whether it was Space War that they were playing one-on-one, -on -one, or uh, a game like uh, Zork, certainly a, a game like Maze, which is being played online among, uh, uh, you know, maybe eight people playing on MLAC terminals. Um, and part of it was that uh, you, know, you cer certainly couldn't go and do your computing, you know, on the T back then. Uh, as you could with a smartphone today, but uh, at the same time, you know, if you were going to compute, uh, if you are going to have access to the machine and work on it uh, or play on it, it was probably going to be in a lab context, um, and there'd be uh, the excuse for collaboration and for discussion at that point. So um, instead of being alone together in your, uh, you know, separate laptop worlds, um, people would be uh, in a space where they would talk with one another, learn about. Uh, a game from someone else, uh, get help, be initiated to it, um, uh, or maybe explicitly work together and try to solve something. I saw an amazing uh, packet of uh, um, fanfold uh, paper off a deck writer uh, in the basement of Senior House where someone here in 1980 had played Zork and was communicating with someone uh, in Next House online while doing this. So you get the transcript of Zork and then be interrupted to uh, just start printing a conversation that he was having with this, uh, with this other student in, uh, in Next House. Um, an amazing uh, sort of document and uh, you know, a very rich experience of the game uh, at that point in time. Before Zork became an internationally acclaimed best-selling entertainment franchise, it was the natural product of a culture of interactive experimentation around computing at MIT that was unique for its time, a culture whose influence, fortunately for us, continues to ripple through today's increasingly digital world. All of that stuff, um, you know, um, happened um, at MIT because there was the ability to do what was called recreational computing. You can think about what that might be an analogy to. Um, but, you know, just uh, uh, not being prescribed computing, but going off on your own and, and trying things out. Um, uh, so, um, Similarly, you know, so Infocom really and, uh, and creating uh, text adventures, creating interactive fiction, as well as uh, uh, work on Space War um, wasn't a sort of, you know, dogged, uh, goal-oriented game development project. It was just one of the many things that emerged around that time, uh, many of which are significant, but also something that did, happened to seize 
the popular imagination and become become successful among a group of computer users beyond various.